call to worship this morning is responsive, so take a look at your bulletin, and then uh, you can follow after me. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and my life is in every part of my grace. Worship is doing what many people outside these walls regard as both paracelsus and foolish. Christian worship is shaped by Jesus Christ who encourages us to approach our holy God as a child approaches a loving parent. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us open our service today with hymn number 353.
the beauty of all beauties, the love surpassing all loves. You hold our life in the palm of your hands. You define our nature by speaking your word. And you save us from delusion and futility by sharing our existence. God, you are the heart and soul of the universe who makes the morning stars sing together and the angels of God shout for joy. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful is your name. We are yours forever. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is merciful and just, will cleanse us and redeem us that we may begin our lives in you. So together let us approach God with our prayer of confession. Great and mighty God, create us anew this day. Would we pose as greater and mightier than we are? Help us be humble and serve us in your name. And when pride causes us to stumble, strengthen our faith. When fear and shame cause us to shrink, remind us that we are made in your image. Reclaim us as the people you have created us to be. And lead us back to the path of discipleship you have called us to walk. In your great and gracious love, we pray. Amen. Christ's love and mercy are greater than our sins, reconciling us to God and to one another. Friends, believe the good news. Who has the wisdom to number the clouds, 
For who can tilt the water skins of the heavens when the dust runs into a mass and the clods clean together? Can you hunt the prey for the lion or satisfy the appetite of the young lions? When they crouch in their dens or lie wait in their covert, do you provide for them? Who provides for the raven its prey when its young ones cry to God and wander about for lack of food? Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
as well as those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And as he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Mechadotha. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications, with loud cries and tears, to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience to what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of the Catholic. This so is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our Gospel lesson today is from the Book of Mark. We read that James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forth to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it that you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Appoint us to sit, one at the right hand and one at, the, at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I, that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism that I was baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will also drink. And with the baptism for which I was baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand, or at my left, is not mine to appoint. For it is for those who everyone has been prepared for. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they have recognized as their rulers, lord over them. And the great ones are, are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. Instead, whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be among you to be a slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a real ransom for many. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. The moment we climb into our cars, we fasten our seat belts, and the motion is so common, we seldom consciously think of it. Click. We buckle up. Fearless souls at amusement parks strap in for roller coaster rides with gravity-defying twists and turns. And park attendants double-check to ensure that safety bars are properly engaged and thrill riders are immobilized. <clears throat> Have you seen the football helmets that young people wear today? They, they're padded with the thick industrial kind of foam lining that they, they weigh probably close to 10 pounds, definitely over 5 pounds, much more than an ounce of prevention for the pounding blows of concussions. Seat belts, safety bars, football helmets, all are intentional measures taken to avoid harm. In a similar way, God tells Job to protect himself when God says, gird your loins. Job is supposed to pull up his tunic, wrap it around his waist, and tuck it in securely. Job needs to pull away any fabric that might be hanging loose around his legs in case he needs to run for his life, and he needs to put extra layers of protection on the parts of his body that are most vulnerable. Gird your loins, says God. And Job knows that this is prudent advice. By the time God has given Job this instruction, Job already has experienced great suffering. He has lost a fortune. 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 donkeys, 500 oxen, and very many servants. Then he lost his family, 10 children and their families. And after that, Job was physically afflicted. He was covered in horrible sores, sores from head to toe. And now, worse than all of that, Job feels distant from God. Job feels he has been separated 
from God. And Job needs God to help him understand why he is being tormented. Job is a faithful man. He's blameless before God, and yet he is being sorely tested by Satan. Before God provides an explanation to Job, God tells him to gird his loins. Job needs a layer of protection because he is going to be wounded by what he will hear. The answer he seeks will come as a blow. Job has suffered because of God's design for human life. Job is human, and all humans are subjected to all of life's possibilities, including the experiences of grief and pain. God is responsible for making it possible for us to suffer. And at the hand of God, we receive both the good and the bad. Human suffering is God's fault. We may wish to deny that God is the one who allows us to experience misery, but God is Lord and creator of all. Satan, who is tormenting Job, resides in heaven. At the time of this story, Satan is part of the occupants there. And it's Satan who says to God, I know you like Job. Yes, he's very impressive, but that's because his life has gone smoothly. It's easy to believe you, God. It's easy to trust in you when everything goes well. And that's when God allowed Job to be tested because God knew that Job's spirit would not be broken and his faithfulness would not come to an end. And God was right. God is Lord and creator of all. A flood, lightning, wisdom, dust, lions, ravens, all are God's creation. Everything falls within God's domain. God creates a vibrant, dynamic universe where all living beings are unleashed to do as they will under the parameters of God's design. God's creatures are free. It's not something we necessarily want to hear or experience. No wonder we're told to gird our loins. Theologian Tom Driver explains the logic of God's creation. Driver writes, if the world be not animate, no God can rule over it. Nothing can be ruled, loved, punished, saved, acted upon, unless it can run, love, fly, fight, flee, cry, laugh, respond. You cannot even breathe life into something unless it can inhale. Job is a human being who experiences the breadth and depth of human experience, prosperity and family, suffering and loss. Job's faithfulness to God does not shield him from painful experiences. Job's righteousness does not spare him. With loins girded, Job hears that God has allowed for evil to be present in this world. Ultimately, God prevails over the forces of evil, but the battle must be fought. It is unavoidable. Gird your loins. We are vulnerable to hardships, as was Job, as was 
Jesus. If Job, a righteous man, does not escape suffering, and if Jesus, fully human as well as fully divine, does not escape cruelty, realize that we, we are going to suffer too. We are wise to gird our loins. We live in a bruising time of divisions. Neighbor is hardened against neighbor. Family members have stopped talking to each other. Friends have dropped treasured relationships. Our national discourse is marred by hostility. An ability to be civil was lost too long ago to remember. The story of Job reminds us that the animosity and antagonism we endure today is a result of God's creation from the beginning. We have the freedom to be decent human beings. Unfortunately, that choice is not always exercised. We humans can be wretched creatures. And while we may initially conclude that the hateful discourse in which we are mired is a flaw of God's making, which would be more dispiriting? To know we choose the words we utter or to be puppets to someone else? God acts as though it is more important for us to have personal agency. God gives us dignity when we are given our freedom. There is not some artificial intelligence placing words on our lips. The thoughts we speak are our own. We each have agency. Each of us has a soul. The good news is that God is the keeper of our souls. Just as God creates our soul, God preserves our innermost nature that is unique. God will not let us be destroyed. God formed us from a void. Out of nothing, God made something. And God did not do that so that human folly will destroy its creatures. God is a creator of the force of life that will never die. Are these times that try human souls? Indeed. Will we live through them? Not without a misery such as was endured by Job. Shall we toss in the towel wave a white flag, surrender, and give up? No! God has